Welcome back to the basement gun shop. So, hold on a second. Okay. So here's a uh, an, a receiver for a uh, AR-15. Uh, um, this is a part for a gun. Um, so normally what you do when you're milling is, just a minute, okay, so, um, change in subject. These are vice jaws that I use when I'm clamping. A, uh, a gun part such as a <sighs> so this is a cardboard box uh, the dimensions of this box are basically about Thanks for watching. So by now you got to be thinking, what the hell was that all about? Well, I'll tell you what it's all about. ITAR. And the proposed changes coming for ITAR. The uh, acronym ITAR stands for International Trade and Arms Regulations. Regulations. Subjugation by regulation. The scumbags in D.C. are at it again. So, how many of you guys out there who subscribe to my channel also watch channels like uh, Iraqi Veterans Channel, Military Arms Channel, Hickok 45, uh, damn, Demolition Ranch, um, all, the, all the good gun channels out there with huge viewership and huge subscribership. You know, the channel that I would eventually like Basement Gun Shop to be like. Well, guess what? If these scumbags in DC have their way, you can kiss all of this goodbye. And it goes even farther than that. I spent my morning doing a little research and it didn't take long into reading the proposed changes to the ITAR, or International Trade and Arms Regulations, didn't take much time to find out why the NRA, ILA, and a whole bunch of right-wing groups are up in arms. This is not bullshit, this is not crying wolf, this is not trying to blow something out of proportion. This is a direct assault on our First and Second Amendments. It, it, it's blatant. For example, a little bit of background, sorry. ITAR deals with basically exporting certain types of weapons or design specs for weapons. And that includes firearms. Section 1 is firearms. Okay? Um, no, I did not read the massive stack of, of paper. I printed the, I got the proposed changes, printed the relevant uh, information that I want to tell you about, which is so dangerous, printed it off, highlighted it so I wouldn't miss anything, and came down here and, and cranked up the camera. Wow. Um, <laughs> obviously, if you're building some new high-tech gun, you don't want it exported to a foreign country, foreign power, foreign national, whatever. We want to keep our technology here in the United States. Who paid for the R&D? But under that is also the technical data. For example, I couldn't take some new plasma rifle that DARPA is working on, I wish, and get the prints and all the technical specs necessary for someone else to build it and send them the technical specs or the technical data. 
Unfortunately, under ITAR, they now want to redefine technical data. Redefine technical data. Since firearms are considered a section, and the firearms section covers everything up to and including the 50 BMG. 12.57 millimeter, I believe. So, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, and I'm angered, and I'm sickened that I'm actually making this video. So, revised definition of technical data, and I'm reading this right out of the Federal Register, and I'll post a link to where you can get this technical data, this stuff that I have right here, right off the government's website, the State Department changes to ITAR start in the bottom right hand corner of the first page. Comes down in a PDF so everyone can get it. Revised definition of technical data. The department proposes to revise the definition of technical data in ITAR section 120.10 in order to update and clarify the scope of information that may be captured within the definition. Paragraph A1 of the revised definition states technical data as information required for the development, production, operation, installation, maintenance, repair, overhaul, or refurbishing of a defensive article which harmonizes with the definition of technology in the EAR and the Wassenaar Agreement. Maintenance, repair, overhaul operation. I'll be right back. Operation, installation, maintenance, or repair. Or refurbishing. So, to load this you simply... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, that's a violation. I can't show you how to pull back the charging handle on an IWI Tavor. Twenty years in prison and a million dollar fine. Boom, right there. For this, twenty years and a million dollar fine. That would make me 69 when I got out of prison. Well, since we're racking up the bill, let's do it again. Well, when I'm cleaning this, typically you just pop out this one pin right there, just like that, and pull this out. Whoa, let's see, popping out that pin, that's maintenance. There's another million dollars in another 20 years. Pull out the bolt. Guess what? 20 years and another million dollar. Are you kidding me? And again, don't take my word for it. As I've said, as I've said so many times, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. I'll post the link to the PDF with the revised proposed changes. <laughs> but wait, it goes farther. They revised the definition of public domain. The department propo proposes to revise the definition of public domain in ITAR section. 120.11 in order to simplify, update, and introduce greater versatility into the definition. Greater versatility. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the Founding Fathers believe that our laws should be as narrowly construed as possible to prevent trotting on our freedoms? But now we're looking for versatility. The existing version of ITAR 12011 relies on an enumerated list of circumstances through which public domain information might be published. An enumerated list. That's a pretty narrowly construed section. That's the way it should work. The department believes that this definition is unnecessarily limiting in scope 
and insufficiently flexible with respect to the continually evolving array of media, whether physical or electronic, through which information may be disseminated. Insufficiently flexible, unnecessarily limiting. Are you shitting me? This is, I don't even know what to call this. I truthfully don't know what to call this. This is the most egregious bullshit to come out of DC since that piece of shit took office. But wait, it gets better. It gets better. <clears throat> Proposed activities that are not exports, re-exports, or retransfers. The department proposes to add section 120.52 to describe those activities that are not exports, re-exports, or retransfers and do not require authorization from the department. For example, they say it's not an export to launch an item into space. Well, no, because it's going into space and the chances that somebody could retrieve it are minimal. Hold on to your hats. The department recognizes that ITAR controlled technical data may be electronically routed through foreign servers unbeknownst to the original sender. This presents a risk of unauthorized access and creates a potential for inadvertent ITAR violations. For example, email containing technical data may, without the knowledge of the sender, transmit a transmit a foreign country's internet service in or transit, I'm sorry, transit a foreign country's internet service infrastructure en route to its intended and authorized final destination. Any access to this data by a foreign person would constitute an unauthorized export under ITAR 12017. Another example is cloud storage. For example, I have prints for AR-15s schematics that I got from the Brownells website for AR-15s, Ruger Mini 30s, Ruger Mini 14s, the uh, Springfield Armory M1A, uh, every handgun I own. I have prints for all of these sitting up on a Google Drive. Under this, if somebody downloads one of those, I'm responsible. I've violated ITAR. There's another million dollars and another 20 years in prison. Any access to this data, even if unintended by the sender, would constitute an export under ITAR. It's the very last sentence that I printed on this sheet. What's next, thought crime? Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly second by this. I can't crank up my video camera and do something that I like to do. Now, let's deal with realities. If I had to shut down basement gun shop, it wouldn't cost me anything. In point of fact, it would save me money. I don't make money off this channel. I don't have sponsors. I don't have people sending me equipment to review. I wish I did because that would be wicked fun. And I could use that to benefit a lot of other people than myself. I could use that to benefit local clubs. I could use that to benefit myself. Hey, what the hell? We're supposed to be a capitalist society, so I'm not adverse to making money. That's why we all have jobs. That's why we all do what we do. We work so we can have a better lifestyle. I started this as a fun project. So how does a fun project, when I can walk into a gun shop in the United States 
and purchase something like this, the IWI Tavor. It can sit there on the shelf in my local gun shop in plain view. Anybody can walk in, handle the gun, disassemble it, check it out, look at it, read the owner's manual. A lot of technical specs in an owner's manual. But I can't even show it to you on a YouTube channel. Are you sh mm. So, I try to do research on everything, especially when I start talking about political stuff. I made the mistake of raking one vendor over the coals on this channel. Now, in point of fact, nothing happened to me for doing it. The vendor didn't contact me, the vendor didn't do anything, um, okay? But I was wrong, and I found out I was wrong, and I did a retraction on here. <clears throat> I try very hard not to make that same mistake again. But here it is in black and white with a little yellow. Subjugation by regulation. This truly is a gag order on every form of social media. Every form of social media. Every form of internet media. Whether it's Reddit, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, uh, Twitter, any, you know, anything like this. Online blogs, forums, reloading forums. RCBS, they have a fantastic reloading forum. You wouldn't even be able to discuss your latest 308 loads. For example, I shot this group using a uh, 175 grain Sierra Match King Boat Tail Hollow Point with uh, 43.9 grains of IMR 4895. Whoa, there's another million dollars in 20 years in prison. So I guess I'm up to about what? 160 years in prison right now? So I urge you. Do not take this as the NRA, ILA, or, or other right-wing groups doing the chicken little thing and, and screaming that the sky is falling. Um, I urge you to do your own research. Like I said, I will post a link to that PDF where you can read it for yourself. <clears throat> they are taking comments on this, public comments on this, until August 3rd. It was posted June 3rd in the Federal Register. They must, by law, give a 60-day comment period. Get on there, make your comments. Tell them to scrap these proposed changes that will affect the First Amendment. Tell them to keep their hands off your freedoms, off my freedoms, off your children's and your grandchildren's freedoms. Get out there and let's get it done. I, I'm, I'm sorry I had to do this video. It, it, it honestly just sickens me. It sickens me. This is not the country I grew up in. This is not the country I served. So, that being said, thanks for watching The Basement Gun Shop. If you like the channel, like it, subscribe, even better. And until next time, stay safe and keep shooting.